Uh, Linda just asked, uh, she had some planning and zoning questions uh, and some housing questions. Uh, she stated that there's been some controversial discussions on the type of housing that uh, may be coming into Washington or, uh, and how do we as uh, candidates feel about that? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about HUD? Yes. Well, it's all kinds of subsidized housing. Just subsidized housing. Well, not necessarily subsidized, but it could be. I mean, just. Any well, other. How do you feel about it? Well, I, I, uh, I feel like we need to have workforce housing in our community. Uh, we can drive all throughout our community and we uh, see a lot of, uh, of very nice homes uh, as our economic development director continues to bring in more industry we do need to have some workforce housing in the community uh, I'm not uh, interested in building uh, HUD housing or subsidized housing we can call it that in the community I think that anytime you start bringing those types of uh, uh, communities into ours or those types of neighborhoods or things. Uh, I've seen it happen in other communities uh, where the it begins to uh, take the community down a notch uh, and it's one of the things that I feel like we have a fine community and uh, I'm not so sure that we should go forth and try to uh, change the, the element here, change the type of people that uh, change our community with doing something like that. So um, I would be against uh, subsidized uh, housing uh, Mr. Payne, project. Yeah, I only have a little bit on that. I, I don't particularly care for subsidized housing, <coughs> but I would like to point out something. We came here in 2001, and frankly, you people were too rich. <laughs> we couldn't afford any housing here in this city. 145000 for a two-bedroom, two-bath villa was the cheapest we could find. Okay? We couldn't, we would have had to uh, get $30,000 out of our savings in order to put in those extras, you know, I talked about before. So we actually had a weird way that we even came here because a guy got some houses together for us that came up. And we went to Meriwether Estates was one. I was going to read Reconnoiter. And Barclay, for some reason, decided to build six villas that they were going to sell for 129000 but it was right down our alley. But he was subsidized. Uh, no, he was not. Oh, I'm <laughs> that's a joke. That was a joke. I paid full price. No, that's I paid a joke. cash, in effect, for the house. But it wasn't a subsidized house. As far as I know, I didn't subsidize it. Nobody subsidized me. And uh, uh, from that standpoint, uh, but what I'm saying is, I've heard about the people. I, I think it's really bad news. If a community. A, a, like a police officer that you hire and you don't pay him enough so that he can live in your community, I kind of think that's a, a lead of you, okay? I think, I think the community does need to have housing that people like teachers and, uh, and policemen that don't necessarily make a lot of money to at least feel that they could live in the community that they're serving. I was really, I really didn't like that when I, I was in the paper about some people mm. shut down some villas, which is the kind I live in, same kind of thing, uh, except it's in a smaller place. And uh, I think from that standpoint, I think you need uh, cheaper housing, per se. It doesn't have to be subsidized. Well, first of all, take a drive to Washington. We have a lot of older workforce housing, and I think we need more of that. Um, we have, don't go be fooled, we already have subsidized housing in this community. Uh, however, I am opposed to the, I think, uh, the, the controversy that was just here recently with a 48 unit complex. Mm -hmm. Having 48 units, subsidized housing is a bad deal all the way around. Uh, Mr. Payne, you need to quit reading the newspaper. <laughs> uh oh. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, but the, but the reality is, <coughs> With subsidized housing, it's, it's a very fine line and very touchy. You, you do need some of it. You've you got to make sure that you take care of your disabled. And sometimes we need it for that. Uh, the elderly, we, we have to have some for the elderly as well. So it's not <coughs> always a bad thing. It's how they use it and how they spread it out and how it's applied. <coughs> Mr. Payne, 
Well, Jeff owns a printing press, so he can get away with that. But for the rest of us mortals, we learn not to argue with people that buy ink by the barrel. So I've got to be real careful about that. Missouri is my favorite newspaper. I get it twice a week. Um, this is an issue. See you guys later. This is an issue that is extremely complex. It's not simple. Uh, it's been the subject of a lot of teeth gnashing. Uh, one of the first things that I did when I got on city council is I realized that we don't have sufficient workforce housing, and that was before the current administration had devaluated your house by 20%. Sure. <laughs> All right, I'm in trouble now. Uh, and when I say current administration, let me be clear about that, just in case, place in place from the newspaper here. I'm talking about the national administration, not local. Um, so anyhow, one of the problems is we have 10,000 square foot lot requirements. That puts a lot of pressure uh, on anybody who wants to build workforce housing. It's really difficult uh, to, to, to get a house built for you know, Randy can probably back me up on this, Walter, maybe uh, 145, $150,000 when you've got a, uh, a 10,000 square foot lot. So the entry level house, it's really difficult. Do I think it's a government job to buy entry level houses? No, I don't, quite frankly. But uh, should there be some kind of stock out there? I mean, there's older houses where a lot of your parents grew up. It was good enough for them. You know, do they need to be rehabbed? Yes, they do. Um, now, as far as uh, what happened over in Stonecrest, that was a very contentious issue, and I will tell you that, unlike my uh, fellow councilman here, I've always been against that. Uh, I was the one that found out about it when they tried to bring that into the city. I made all the requisite calls, talked to all the uh, appropriate politicians, and I was shocked to find out how close this city came to having 48 units expandable out to 150 units. That's how big it could have been. Not only was the construction of it going to be subsidized, but the rents were going to be subsidized. Now, anybody that thinks that's a great idea, you name me your business. You own a printing press? Well, how about a guy coming into town that's sponsored by the government and can build that printing press for 25% cheaper than you? And oh, by the way, he can sell his product for 25% cheaper than you can. Yeah. So at the, end, at, at the end of three years, who's still going to be in business? Is it the local guys that did it the old-fashioned way with their own money and going to the Bank of Washington and borrowing it? Or is it the people that went to the Bank of the United States government and used your tax money to build it? Yeah. And that's why we got so wound up about this issue, and you can probably see my emotions starting to build up about it, because I was very, very upset what came this close, this close to happening in your city.